không thể trí sức Đấy. Khổ cũng như là uh, vui vẻ cũng như là trước Chứ không kể khổ đã tu hành à, là tâm của mình và nguyện của mình Nam của mình không phải ai dạy bảo Đúng không? My name's Pat Farmer, and I've had a long and a distinguished career as an ultramarathon runner. This is not a story about me. This is about Vietnam, a country and a people that I came to love. From the moment I arrived in Vietnam, I knew that this was going to be an extraordinary experience. The vibrancy of the country, its people, the challenges that we faced, and the cause that we were there for. These were all great motivations to just get out there and put one foot in front of the other. Running the length of Vietnam was no small task. No one had ever done this before, as getting through the provinces and the politics was extremely complicated. But then again, I've never really thought small or simple. To achieve this, I'd have to run close to a double marathon every single day. So why do it? This was all to celebrate the 40th anniversary of Australia's trade agreement with Vietnam. But even more importantly, our aim was to raise money and awareness for the Red Cross. His target is to raise $275,000 to help uh, vital humanitarian projects. I'd like to think that I've achieved a lot over the last 30 years in my running career. And now it's time almost to hand the baton over. And it's important to inspire other people, like Hoy, for instance. I just want to take this opportunity to thank everyone to, for making this happen, especially Pat, uh, for helping me making my dream happen and uh, the Red Cross for, make, for doing things, beautiful things about the world. A few years ago, I ran across the world. I mean, how do you top that? My dream was to move into coaching and at 50 years old, I figured the time was just right. So when a determined, optimistic young man named Mike Hoy approached me with the idea for this run, it seemed like a good sign. I'd never been to Vietnam and it had been some years since Hoi had lived there too. So setting a route with Hoi, from Mong Kai up near the Chinese border down through into the capital of Hanoi and then pushing on from there into Hoi's hometown of Ho Chi Minh City and then all the way down to the very bottom down to Nam Can was an exciting first step.
Hi, my name is Tran Nguyen. I'm Tiffany Nguyen. We are the organizers. We have come across a lot of difficulty. Uh, at the very last minute, uh, we only got uh, two sponsors to come in uh, into this, so we give this project everything we have and everything we don't have, including we have to borrow money from uh, our friend, our supporter, uh, in order to make this happen. I have to quit my job um, to dedicate all my time to this project because um, in Australia, uh, basically, no one believes us, no one believes that we can do this. And back here in Vietnam, even worse. You know, what we did for the past five months proved to a lot of people that, yes, it can happen if you, have, if you put your heart and you believe that you can do it, then anything is possible. Through my running, I want, I want to, to show it to show the world how, how a young Vietnamese is able, is able to do, to, to dare to dream. I've got so many dreams that I'm, I'm 25. I'm a, I, have, I have dreams to, to, to climb Mount Everest, to climb the seven summits of the world, to, to sail around the world on a small boat with a sail. My pan, he's, he's been on this business for, for ages. He's, He's like a master, and I'm, I'm, I'm just the one, just, just get a taste of it. This is just my, my first taste, and still uh, so many to come. Can I say how very honoured I am to be able to have the opportunity to run in your country. Uh, my journey is not about myself or my we. Uh, this journey is about uh, all of humanity. Hoy and I were raring to go. Uh, a little overwhelmed. Yeah, it's incredibly exciting. I've never had a send off like that before. Hi, uh, my name is Le Quy Dương. For Poe to Poe Vietnam, I work as the um, uh, producer and director in Vietnam. And I just simply think, well, he can run and I can do this. I can make this happen. Because he can run throughout the countries. And why not? I can do this. Yeah. So to organize that, it's, it's huge. It's, it's a huge amount of work and it's a, a lot of pressure. 
but the government and the police and ourselves cannot make people, you know, laugh and smile and waving their hand to welcome pet farmer and us if they don't want. People have support a lot and uh, and um, and the and the most important support from from the people actually is their heart. I think it's absolutely a great, a very significant project, really for hope and. Uh, for young people, for the people who uh, look at us, look at pet farmer, and look at the people who work in the project, as pet farmer always wish, and he always say, uh, we are not going to give up. We are not going to stop in the middle for whatever reason. was so thick, we hadn't considered the type of pollution that we'd come across. It was hard just to breathe. You know, I still can't believe that the people in northern Vietnam are used to it. Little wonder that everybody was wearing masks. Come to think of it, we should have been wearing them too. The stretch from Mong Kai to Hai Jung was filled with mining villages, each 20 kilometres long and filled with soot. The presence of the Red Cross suddenly made a lot of sense. They were needed here. Our causes were united, so they were always at the core of my run. no matter how many you've done before. <coughs> I just have a head cold, I it's need to take I was almost surprised every time I saw a member of the crew who wasn't wearing a Red Cross shirt or a hat. They were everywhere. I truly admire these people because they don't care about politics, race or religion. All they care about is improving people's quality of life. I'm grateful to have them on my side. We also needed the cooperation of the police, more than we could have known, and they truly gave us their full support. They kept the entire crew safe and on the road, and on top of that, all they asked for was a few signed copies of my book. The two police that have been with us all day long, they've been great supporters to us. It's Sunday, so they've worked on the Sunday for us. They've been uh, keeping us safe and protecting us along the road. This run is all about trying to um, 
cut down the barriers between government and the people on the ground and it's worked really, really well. The police have been fantastic, a great support to us. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. I'm a tour manager. Yeah. And uh, this girl, this two girl is our service girls. This is our driver. He's the best driver ever. Yeah. Running into the Vietnamese capital of Hanoi was a special occasion and our first milestone. The event held on our arrival was a great cultural significance to both the Vietnamese and ourselves as proud Australians. Hi. They got a new local hero, Mai Wee. He's uh, their, their local champion, so. All we've got to do is make sure we conclude this event, we make it all the way through to the finish, and the sky will be bigger than the rock star. Thank you! Hello. I'm extremely pleased as Australian ambassador to uh, be able to he be here this evening to support uh, Pat's run around Vietnam. I made a very simple promise, and it was this, that the two of us, Mai Wei and myself, both Australia and Vietnam, would take every single step together from the start all the way through to the finish. This is also to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the friendship agreement between both Australia and Vietnam for friendship and for trade. It was a privilege to run with the ambassador, and they even managed to close off the main streets. And from what I hear, that's the first time they've ever done that. Hanoi embraced us both, but you can see that they have particular pride in their new champion, Hoi. 
The people themselves are absolutely amazing. You know, they're really embracing this run. They see this as a, you know, obviously a one-off at first. And, and they're fantastic. Little boys like this running with me, it's just tremendous. This is what it's all about, trying to inspire as many people as possible. How are you feeling uh, physically? My boy started to scream, what the hell are you doing to me? <laughs> well, I just keep, I just keep telling it to push on. I'm, I'm, I'm wiped out. My feet hurt. My ass hurts. Everybody, everything hurts. But if you look at the definition in Hoi, Hoi's uh, legs, he's very, he's getting very tired in the calf muscles now, and you're starting to see the veins really come out heavily. There's, uh, he's, he's got some pressure going on there. So most important on these hot days, he keeps the fluids up. I found it really hard that the Mach 20, 25k to, to 40 k's. I was, I was really struggling, and I, I just keep telling Pat, Pat, I need a rest. I need a rest. And, and Pat just said, keep just one more k, one more k, and. And it pulled me through because I, I knew I knew that if I get past the, the 40k mark, I I would be alright. And 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 he would he, he just kept talking to me, keep going, keep going. And to be honest with you, uh, on the first and the second day, I I was really pumped. I was I was really pumped. I I've, I've seen people doing ultra running, and I saw and I saw them doing six and six and a half k. Jeez, I was running. I was running like. Eight hours to ten hours at 10, 10 kilometer an hour, just straight. And the first day, the second day, the third day, yeah, I, I was ahead. I was like, "Come on, Pat, with my head, come on, going, keep going, come on, faster." And actually, the fourth and the fifth day, I actually get to to realize why why he was going at that speed. It, it, it is a long run. It is not one hundred kilometers, two hundred kilometers. It, this is three thousand kilometers. So it it was a it was a really a learning journey for me to so Pat said he, he he just joked he just joked he's the old guy who got a brain I'm the young guy who has the muscles so he he said he is a, a master and I am and I am a grasshopper and I can't leave the temple until we arrive at Camp Mao so if today Pat wasn't encouraging me to keep Keep going one more step. Keep going one more step. I'm I'm not sure I'm here, you know. So <laughs> it is it is a learning journey. Yeah, I'm, 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 and I I really appreciate it. What I've learned. Yeah. These young children, they spawned uh, a few days and abandoned before the, the temple. His life depends on the compassion of, you know, people like us. Cái cái này là cô thấy chắc là nó phát tâm từ cái đáy lòng vì tha của cô và theo như Phật ngoài là lời tha đem về tục đẹp lại cho người khác tên tục nhân là hồ thị yên nhi pháp nhân là huệ đức thế nói về vấn đề cái điều kiện gì mà hội thúc cố thúc giá thì cái đấy theo nhà phật thì gọi là cái duyên thì tại cô đến đây là ngày 16 tháng 10 năm tầm ba và tới cuối tháng 11 á thì người ta đem con đi tới mà sinh ra này quăng bỏ trong chùa trong vương chùa Thế nhưng cái cháu mà được uh, mỗi năm thì là có um, liền vào trong chùa thì mình ở vào mình nuôi có cháu thì lừa văn cài đó cái văn cài xanh này hàng năm có đứa thì liền vùng chuối đứa này vùng gốc cái cam 
cái ổ ấy mình lượm vào mình nuôi mà đa số mấy cháu đây là bị bỏ rơi giống như là bố bỏ mẹ khi có bầu là nó bỏ bỏ rồi có nhiều cháu bị chết cống chết lần cống giống như mùa mưa thì bị chết lần rồi con mùa nặng thì chết ngạt hiện giờ thì mấy cháu đó là còn được chúng các đa hoàng nhưng mà mấy cháu được cho ăn học đa hoàng ra trường đi làm hết từ hiện giờ thì con số cuối cùng á ngày hiện giờ là 102 cháu và những người già cả tăng tật nếu đơn không nên tựa về những cháu mà bị tạc tật nguyên về ba mẹ cũng bỏ rơi trong chùa thì chùa cũng dựng vào núi và chùa thì chủ trương cho các cháu ăn học đến nơi chỗ cũng đang hoang vì cả cô cứ nghĩ rằng những bậc học hay bậc tí lý nếu có người mà không có học thì không hiểu biết cái gì nên nó dễ bị xóa đỏ về cái đường không tốt nên như cả cô quyết tâm dạy giáo dục của các cháu có một cái nền đạo đức cho thật tốt à, cho vững chắc để sau này ra đời này mấy cháu là, 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 khỏi bị xã hội chế cười để khỏi bị vấp ngã vào để xã hội không được lành mạnh thì tôi nghĩ rằng tôi mình phải đem vào lòng từ mình thấy thế cha nó với mẹ cháu mình nuôi mà cần ngay để gắn bỏ mấy cháu thì thấy mấy cháu cũng quá cũng đa hoa mà cũng nuôi nuôi cho tới giờ thân đấy giống như là một cái đại gia đình vậy ai giúp gì cái gì thì tốt cái đó Nhưng hôm nay là cho uh, cơ sở chùa dự pháp á, được uh, hồi tư thiện chạy bộ mà đến đây thăm viện con giúp đỡ cho cô những gạo những thực phẩm như dầu gạo mì và tất cả những cái thức thức ăn hàng ngày cho mẹ cháu thì đây là một điều hết sức là uh, quý trọng đối với mẹ cháu thường thường người ta đem để ta cho năm chục ký ba chục ký để có thỉnh thoảng người ta mới cho được năm năm trăm ký con đây mình cho được một, một ngàn ký như vậy thì đổi về nhà chùa rồi mấy mấy cháu thì hết sức vui mừng và cảm động về tấm lòng uh, của tập thể đoàn chạy bộ ở từ bên úc về đây mà có quan tâm giúp đỡ như vậy là hết sức trân trọng và cảm ơn rất nhiều yeah. Just have a timely reminder of just how dangerous these roads can be. There's some poor souls gotten up this morning and they're riding their bike on their way to work or to the shop or to the school or to their family. And um, the trucks clipped them. And that's it. An awakening for all of us to just how dangerous it can be on the roads and how fortunate I am to have the support of the police in the country. With this run, but even with that, it's still a dangerous place to be. And this is a numbers game. That was just one of the many accidents that happened along the way. But that, together with so many other things, was playing on Hoy's mind. Pushing through those mental boundaries is one of the greatest challenges an ultramarathon runner faces. Yeah, I'm just waiting for Hoy to catch up. He's uh, having a lot of difficulty today. So um, uh, we've only got nine kilometres to go. It's really important I get him through this day. It's another one under our belt. And he can have a rest and hopefully recover for tomorrow. So we'll see what happens. But uh, just taking on a day-to-day -day basis, every, every day I get him through it, we're a day closer to... Uh, closer to his parents showing up, which I think will lift his spirits enormously. Uh, the funny thing was that at uh, 10 k at, at, at the mark of 50 k uh, the doctor went out and said uh, he didn't allow me to go on anymore. So I put him on, on the car and sent him off. <laughs> that was pretty funny. I didn't, I didn't want to have any, any negative things put into my head and, and Pat wanted the same thing, so... OK, over here! I started to feel some pain on, on, on my shin, about 52 kilometer mark, so I was going with the pain until 70k. So I just, I was just putting my head down. Didn't, didn't even want to wave to anybody. 
Uh, we're just playing shooting. At one point, I was walking on my own. I, I just feel I just crying because it was just so much pain. Hopefully, it's gonna it's gonna be fine tomorrow, so that I can keep running running again. But if it's not fine, I'm I'm gonna still keep going until I get to calm out. His body's like five times better than mine. He's stronger, faster, fitter than fitter than I've ever been. But his mind's not there, and that's the problem. Như ngày hôm qua thì Mai Huy chỉ bị một cái chấn thương nhẹ từ cách đây khoảng hai ngày là cái dây chằng ở đầu gối, đầu gối trái của Huy do vận động và chạy thì nó bị tổn thương. Xong đến ngày hôm nay thì lúc nghỉ trưa ấy. Bên y tế của mình có kiểm tra lại cho Huy thì là thấy cái cổ chân, cái xương chày này của Huy là nó phù lè, nó sưng lên, sưng lên, sưng đỏ lên. Um, you know, you can't put a hold head on young shoulders, unfortunately. Uh, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm working with him. We're getting through it. Hopefully, we'll be able to strengthen his mind as well. Thì là muốn yêu cầu Huy là tạm nghỉ để em giữ cái sức khỏe để có thể ngày mai lại chạy tiếp được. This guy, he should have walked slow and he just phew. Hiện tại thì bây giờ Mai Huy chưa thể hiểu được. Có nghĩa là sau cái chặng đường hôm nay thì là về mình nghỉ tối thì mình sẽ trực tiếp là theo dõi cái chấn thương của Mai Huy. Okay, we're in a place called Kian. Uh, it's our first day where we've hit the coast. Uh, we're right out here on the very edge of the coast. We've got about five minutes before we were due to start, and I just got the news from Hoy that um, uh, he's not running today. For me, it's not an option, though. No. There is no days off on these journeys. You never can have a day off. You can't quit, you can't stop until the job's done. Uh, he'll, hopefully he'll be back on the road and be running with us a little bit later on down the track uh, uh, in a couple of days' time. Anybody say it, this is easy. You see two guys out there doing like they're walking, like not people just tell going faster, go faster. It is hard. It is. It is. It is not not easy. It is bloody hard. And that's why it teach me to realize there are so many things in life to to learn new appreciations. Mentally, I have worked out. I have ran close to 900 kilometers in 12 days. So for me, it is a it is a huge achievement for a for a runner who just started running just a year and a half ago. If I push myself too hard out there, am I gonna be able to be around tomorrow? I have no idea. I, although I know that the only thing I can control is today, but what I do today might affect is gonna what's gonna happen tomorrow. So I, I was running with an injury on my leg. I was limping, doing 70Ks for the last three days. So I was doing about 250 kilometers with an injured leg. And to, to be able to keep going like that, it, it required so much. I, th I hope he'll, he'll understand why I decided to do what, what I decided to do. I came and talked to him this morning and say, uh, hey, Pat. Uh, I'm gonna take today off to to see how 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 my leg is because it just doesn't get any better or it doesn't get any worse and I'm scared. What happened next was nothing short of a kangaroo court. <laughs> Tuy nhiên đấy không phải là tiết triển khá tốt không có nghĩa là mình có thể tham gia tiếp tục là thi đấu được và chạy được thì cái nguy cơ chấn thương tai phát chấn thương rất là cao và hai nữa là cái chấn thương này là tai phát thì thường thường nó nặng hơn là cái lúc khởi đầu thì nên yêu cầu là 
vi nên dừng cuộc chạy tại đây để tiếp tục điều trị để cho vết thương hoàn toàn phục hồi. According to the Vietnamese laws regulating the sport of running, the health of an athlete is the most important factor and the most respected. So, after consideration by the Vietnamese Department of Culture and Sports, one of our key sponsors, it was decided that Hoi shouldn't be allowed to continue to run. <laughs> bản thân bác tỏa tập em bán cả cái tương lai của em em phải ngồi xe lăn em như thế này cho nên là trong cái này mình phải cân nhắc giữa cái lý và cái tình cái lý thì rõ ràng là hôm nay anh đại diện cho bên phòng thương mại công nghệ châu á chính thức loại bỏ em ra khỏi cái cuộc chạy chính thức nhưng về về tình thì vẫn muốn nhìn thấy em có thể cùng chạy hưởng ứng I am officially disqualified from, from the race, so I'm, I'm not allowed to race anymore because the doctor made an, a report that my, my leg was injured, so I, I'm not allowed to, to run anymore. Yeah, this, this whole thing, ultra marathon, is, is to push, I mean to push, just to keep pushing. And hear the doctor say, I'm not allowed to push anymore. He, he doesn't know anything about my body, only I know what happened to my body. Only I know, I know in here that I can push on. He doesn't know what's happening in my head. And he made a report saying that I'm not allowed to run anymore and that's... I can't do anything. It is, this is like Steve Jobs and uh, the Apple, the Apple company, you know? Yeah, I, yeah. I was, I was thinking about Steve Jobs. Really, actually, I was actually thinking about him. And Apple was his idea, and then he was kicked out by the people he actually trust, and he was kicked out of his own company. And look at this, this whole bloody run. This is run. This whole run. This is my dream, and I just persevere for like years. I mean, like, say it exactly a year. <laughs> Yeah, I feel the pain. I feel the pain for Steve. I really feel the pain. And I'm, yeah, I'm painful, really, I'm painful. Yeah. It was all me after that, and running on the road was suddenly different to how it had been before. It was lonely on the road. I never took days off, and that made it even harder on everyone in the crew because they didn't get the chance to rest either. Worse still, I hadn't seen my children, Brooke and Dylan, or my girlfriend, Tanya, in a long time. They were on their way, but I didn't know when. Just thinking about the kids was hard because they've traveled with me on these trips all their lives. Okay. Sam, make sure you bring lots of drinks to my room. Lots. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Lots. Okay. Lots. Okay. lots of cold drinks. I mean, lots of cold drinks. Well, today was an incredibly hot day. I went really well for the first uh, 50 kilometers, even the first 60 then. 
I hit that wall that runners talk about or the wheels fell off or whatever it is that happens, but I just fell apart at that point. Anyway, experience teaches you to hang in there, keep it together, and you can, uh, you can improve another day. At least you live to survive another day. It was that time of the year, and I was yearning for my family. OK, it's nearly Christmas. It's, uh, it's the 20th of December. I've just had a pretty um, difficult day, very, very hot out there on the road, but um, as you can see, everybody's celebrating Christmas here as well. I just want to wish everybody very happy and a holy Christmas. Um, God bless everybody who support all the things that I've done to try and change lives of those less fortunate than ourselves. Happy Christmas. My emotions are all mixed up at the moment. I feel like crying, I feel like um, uh, just being happy, but uh, my body aches. And it's a very difficult uh, part of the journey. I've also looked at myself in the mirror and I look a bit of a mess at the moment. My lips are split to pieces. My sunburn is um, pretty bad. And um, I'm just carrying a couple of small injuries, uh, but they're bad enough to niggle away at me all day long. I should be much happier than what I am. I just, um, I just feel in a lot of pain in my body and throughout my legs. But uh, on the inside, I'm happy. We're somewhere in between, um, around about midway, uh, and um, you know, it's just tough. Uh, it's just tough mentally at the moment. But you know, it's just all good things happening at the moment. The support from the public has been incredible. Whenever I do these journeys, the toughest thing has always been away from my family. Sure, it's a, a different landscape, but it's just like being home and just going to work for the day. So mentally, it's so much easier on me. And I promised my crew that I would be a much happier person to be around uh, with Brooke and Dylan here, so uh, I will be. <laughs> I will be. Hoy's foot seemed to be healing, and the swelling had gone down significantly from what I could see, which gave him greater mobility. But honestly, seeing him sleeping while I ran across the country got my goat. We're just trying to make everybody's job easier, and then we keep asking ourselves, what can we do? What the, is there anything else? So we had to be very uh, strong, to make sure that everything uh, go ahead smoothly, regardless how difficult. I am Brooke. And I'm Dylan. And we are Pat's children. And we are from Sydney, Australia. And we have come to Hawaii uh, to meet up with Dad today, this afternoon. Very exciting. We had an experience in Ho Chi Minh City where we were on a bicycle with uh, another guy pedaling, and there were we were in a main intersection, and there were bikes and cars and people flying towards us at rapid rates, which was kind of scary. Um, but no, it's a really cool place so far. We really like it. We're, we're really, really looking, looking forward, forward to seeing Dad. Dad. <laughs> Synchronized. We just did not to go meet up with Dad.
I thought I had a good day. I mean, for my body at this stage, I just started this whole running business. My mind was there. My, my mind was there that think, thinking I could do it, I, I could push on, but what I have done in the past, I, I was doing my longest run was 100K. And, uh, and I thought being able to do 100K, jumping from, from nil to a 100 kilometer race in one go, I could, I could take on a 3000K run. But I think I was, I think I was overconfident. Yeah, I think so. Good mind. He, if he tired or he at some point he can stop, and the Vietnamese, you know, the member of the group, we will absolutely run together. We bet he will be, he's not alone. If I keep on going, I'll 70 to 80 k's a day. I think I'll, I'll get to the to the stage where I could run like that, but I'm not there yet. I'm back to full health and I'm ready to run and I'm, I'm just gonna take one step at a time and, and see how my, my body holds up. I'm keeping promise to myself to get back on the road and I'm, I'm pretty amazed to see how my, my body holds up and how, how it heals. I fell now and now I'm, I'm standing up and get, I'm ready to, to get back. This is the new race for me and the fitness is calm out. I'm ready to run and I'm ready to, to, to take just one step at a time. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas! It's good to be back. The kids had finally arrived and Hoy was back on the run. I finally felt like I could look outside of myself again. They are incredibly resourceful. They're using everything that they got and uh, they work damn hard, you know, incredibly hard. I just have so much admiration for the Vietnamese people because they're just such solid workers and I think that's why they appreciate what we're doing as well. We're working hard too.
Bởi vì là nghỉ trăng, đích trăng là nghỉ khoảng mùng 10 âm cho đến có 20 âm đồng, đến 2 âm mùng 10 Mùng 10 âm, cho đến 20 âm, cứ dụng như một tháng là đầu tháng mùng 1 Họ đi làm cho mãi đến mùng 10 Ờ, ờ, cứ cứ cháu mà Hai mươi họ đi làm, bác quay đất sau là mùng 10 âm, bác quay đất sau là mùng 10 âm, bác quay đất sau là mùng a lot of the food is squid, the prawns, the fish is sun-dried and it's served like that. We've got the coconuts, getting the banana trees, but we're getting rice farming as well, side by side, which is a little unusual, but this is the fruit basket and what they call the rice basket for the whole country, this southern region. So it's most important that they look after this region because it feeds the whole country.
pastries here, they're very, very good. And I noticed they got a lot of quail eggs as well. And um, they often throw a few quail eggs into the ramen. farm technology, it's nice to see that they're making most of the coastline and the, and the wind blowing here. Just goes to show you how advanced uh, Vietnam really is. Yeah, it's really, really a country that's going places. We're in a field of uh, dragon fruit growing on the trees. Pretty exciting, haven't seen it before. It's a little bit fun. <laughs> yeah. I'm come here to give to give to Pat the gift I made for him and for the kids. It's made by my kids in the school. We have the project to recycle all the old things, the news, old newspaper, everything. So it's done. So I'm happy for that. That lady, she actually works at a school in Hoi An. She also has a government job. Her job is to encourage people to walk and to ride bikes, push bikes rather than motorbikes or cars. They want to try and decrease the traffic in Hoi An. And so she um, saw me as a great example to people in relation to all of that. She's read my book and uh, she was moved enough to catch the bus down to here, all the way down to here, which is hundreds of kilometres later, uh, to have a run with me and present me with a little gift that the school children had made for me. It was really lovely and it's just another example of how the people are being moved by our efforts and inspired by what we're doing. We're at the stage in the run now where you know you just become a machine. And that means that you have no feelings, you just get up have your breakfast, arrive on the road and you just get on with what you're doing and you do what you do and it just becomes this repetitive cycle day after day after day. You leave your feelings out of it, your emotions out of it, aches and pains out of it and you just do what you got to do. Um, my lips are painful, really painful. They've been split open and bleeding for the last few days uh, and my nose has been bleeding as well. Um, no matter how much sunscreen I put on or whatever, it just never works in these situations. You're just sweating so much and uh, washing it off. Anyway, it's just all part and parcel of the whole thing. I'm a bit fed up. I just don't want to get any more burnt, so I put this thing on. 
this silly towel around my face is here to do one thing and that is try and protect my lips and my nose from getting any further burnt. I'm just not travelling real well today. I'm having stomach cramps and all sorts of problems today. carrying a few natural injuries I've lost to this stage six toenails but who needs toenails they're overrated anyway um, had a few blisters and bruises along the way but once again nothing too severe my joints are all good the knee joints ankle joints hip joints are all pretty good my mental state of mind's good but once again it's the small things that really play on your mind and really knock you around As we approached Ho Chi Minh, I really felt the distance. We'd clocked over 2,000 kilometres to this point and I felt worn out, lonely too, as the kids were heading back to Australia around then. Luckily, my girlfriend Tanya was on her way and knowing that kept me going. I couldn't help but wonder how she'd react when she saw how much I'd changed. Yeah, yeah, I got, got Tanya here running with me, which is fantastic, so she's out here to put in a run for the morning. And... The highlights so far have definitely been seeing how this whole thing has captured the excitement of the whole nation, really. Seeing roads closed and police escorts and people cheering from the streets, people coming in mass numbers to join Pat running. It's just overwhelmingly exciting and quite, quite beautiful, to say the least. We're treated like we're really somebody special. We don't stop at red lights. We go through all the red lights. We have police escorts with us everywhere. We're welcomed by the dignitaries into each of the towns and given this sort of star status. After six long weeks, we were back where it all began. Ho Chi Minh City. It's the largest city in Vietnam. The biggest city traffic wise, and whilst we made our way through Hanoi, all right, with streets cordoned off, uh, we will do the same thing with Ho Chi Minh City with the police support. But we're going to disrupt a lot of traffic as we come through there a real lot of traffic. This is a population of 90 million people in the whole country, so this city's got a lot of people in it. So it's most important that we, that we get in there, get through there as quickly and as efficiently as possible. And uh, it's been a milestone that's been playing on my mind for a long period of time, so another one which is really good to get behind us. in the heart of the city at the moment so it'll be a good 10 maybe yeah a good 10 kilometers before we get out of the, the confines of the city so the police and the motorcyclists are doing a great job of blocking the traffic for us so we got a pretty good free run this morning yeah. <laughs> it's a great yeah it's a good feeling eh? yeah. <laughs> oh this just you know you gotta understand they never, it just no one ever shuts the roads for this sort of stuff. 
I've never in two and a half years seen anything like it. Incredible. What a day. Good luck, guys. Go you Red Cross. Man, you got to be proud. I'm proud. <laughs> Good feeling in the camp with everybody, yeah. yeah. To make it into Ho Chi Minh City and uh, to be heading towards Carmel. In the last push to finish, I actually started feeling healthier and happier, and I could forget my physical pain. I put this down to the immense amount of appreciation and passion that we were receiving and I think giving back to the Vietnamese people. There were seven days of the run left, during which we crossed through the provinces of Thao Dao Ma, Tan An, Mai Thao Giang, Tian, Vinh Long, Khen Tho, Hiao Jiang, Sok Tran, and Bak Liung.
Boy, come here. What's next? Well, I don't really know. But one thing I do know is that I love adventures. And even though it's getting harder for me as I get older, I still feel I have a lot left to give. And I want to help others to achieve their own goals and dreams. <laughs>